What up boys and welcome back to another gold farming video. So I've been doing this series where I go in depth into uh, all of the dungeons that I regularly farm uh, to tell you guys why I farm and what I'm hoping to get and also how to farm it because I've been getting a lot of new subscribers since like Classic WoW and then Shadowlands and these are like dungeons that I've featured in the past but more like, this is what I got from the dungeon, but uh, it's RNG, so I definitely missed out on a lot of loot. And there's definitely a lot of new audience who haven't seen me do uh, these dungeons or know why I'm doing the dungeons. Because I'm getting like constant questions whenever I live stream and I run dungeons of people asking me why I'm in the dungeon. What am I hoping to get? So uh, the feedback so far on these videos have been great. You guys want to see more of them? So here I am. So before we dive into the dungeon and its loot, I want to mention that you guys can still get this zero to 10 million gold guide. Basically a book that will help you go from zero gold to 10 million gold. And make sure that you use the uh, the code Shadowlands and you will get 50% off. So click the link down below in the description and also pinned comment. So shadow fang keep it takes place right here in uh silver pine forest and it's very important that you guys take it on a normal mode you don't want to run this on heroic uh you, you got to do it on the good old fashioned classic shadow fang keep so why would people farm shadow fang keep the old dungeon well in the past everyone was farming it uh, to get twink items because a lot of the best in slot twink items would come from Shadowfang Keep, like the Shadowfang, the Crology, Mind of Trust, the Assassin's Blade, Gloom Shroud, there's a ton of items that were best in slot for level 19 Twinks. Now, however, it has changed and Twinking is not what it used to be. Meaning that the people who buy these items that I just uh, mentioned, they don't buy them as uh, Twink items anymore. They, they're going to buy it as Transmog items to add it to their collection. So, uh, the only thing that I hate about Shadowfang Keep is that if you're Alliance, you have to wait for ages for this guy after killing the boss, this guy, the pack leader Ivor Bloodfang, to come and open up this door before you can continue. If you play Horde, it's, it's faster. I don't know why, but like the RP is faster and you don't have to wait for as long. So, I usually just run through, kill the first boss, I don't even loot, and then I run back and check the loot, uh, because this guy takes just absolutely ages. Uh, one important uh, thing to, uh, to, uh, to get from this video is that you want to be able to open up locked chests, because you're not killing a ton of mobs in Shadowfang Keep, so you want to be able to open up the chest. There's like a ton of uh, possibility, uh, like possible locations where there can be chest spawns. This is the first one in this corner right here. I uh, usually go into the stables right here and kill these guys too, because as I said, there's not that many mobs. So you want to make sure that you kill uh, every single mob that you can. And there is one item, blue item specific to the dungeon, uh, Face Smasher. Not the best item, a 12,000 gold market value. A shitty price on my realm though. Normally, I wouldn't look at the loot as I'm looking uh, on it right now. I'm just going to like order loot everything and then sort the bags out. Uh, but then when I do these videos, I tend to just skip all the looting and like don't loot a single mob. And there's always so many comments. And now I'm checking it just for that reason. Uh, these are like two additional uh, spawn points of a chest. You can spawn one right here. And there's also a possible spawn point right here with these mobs. Uh, you're pretty much, if you follow the route that I'm doing right now, it's nearly impossible to miss the chest. Besides from one chest, uh, which I'm going to show to you guys. So make sure you go down to the cellar thingy. So you can kill these guys in this room. And as you can see, there's another chest. This one being up. And it's also, this is an open chest, but it's usually, uh, or quite often, they're locked. So you want to bring, bring a rogue or a tune that has a profession that allows you to open up the chest. So in my case, I have inscription, so I can use the scroll of unlocking, and that allows you to open up the chests. And another possible spawn location for a chest is right here in this room. But it's never going to be uh, like up right here, and then also with this one right here. So now we're going to like go back up the stairs again and into this uh, next room where you find the boss. Well, the second boss. 
third boss actually. So making sure that I don't miss out on any uh any shadow fangs, the holy grail. We're gonna talk about the loot and everything that you can get at the uh the end of this run. Very short dungeon. Doesn't matter what class you farm it with, you're gonna be able to uh, uh to do it like within six minutes on every single class. So nothing those uh blues were BOP. Not worth picking those up. Make sure that you walk like up on these uh these gargoyles. Because, as mentioned before, you want to kill every single mob that you can. So sometimes you got to hug him for them to uh, to spawn. And nothing that I want to keep. Nope. And then another chest. Uh, nothing of interest. And we're going to keep on going. Kill this guy. Nada. These guys right here too. And we're approaching... Uh, Two locations for a chest quite close to each other. So one of them is right here. As soon as you go up that stair, is that staircase, there can be a chest. The other one is right underneath the staircase. And that's the one that people usually miss because you're just jumping down the stairs. But this one right here under the staircase. Uh, nothing of interest. Now, this is where you could leave the dungeon, which I am. Because when you're walking up these stairs, you, you only kill six mobs and two bosses. And there's RP. So you could go all the way and walk up the stairs and do the entire dungeon and then run out. But I just tend to uh, check for this chest, kill the mobs. And then once I've done that, I just jump down and out the dungeon. You can jump over this fence or you could just jump on the roof and directly out of the dungeon. And then rinse and repeat. That's how I run it. But you have the time to do the, the whole thing. But it's more efficiently like mob kills per minute to do the route that I just showed you guys. So that's how you run it and why you want to run it. I was talking about it. The twink items used to be the reason why. Now the twink items are sold as collectibles, uh, aka transmog items. And the items that you're going to be after, when it comes to random like loot that isn't specific to Shadowfang keep. The only really thing that you want to keep is like the Buccaneers set, like the Buccaneers vest and robe, and then you also can get some silver tread, but that's it. The green items are really dull, really bad. Um, the blues is where the, uh, the money is at. So you have the most rare items being uh, the Gloom Shroud armor. I've seen it drop a couple of times, but it's very rare. Then you have the weapon, the Dusk Bringer. I can uh, show you guys these on the auction house. Um, let's see. You have the, if, if they're up, the Gloom Shroud. There's one up for 600,000 gold. And then you have the, the Dusk Bringer. Not even up on the auction house. Really expensive. Then you have the Necrology, necrology uh, Robes. Not even up on the auction house. That's and I play in like a super full pop realm. And then you have the uh, almighty famous Shadow Fang selling for three hundred thousand gold, and that is realistic. Getting three hundred thousand gold for it in the today's economy. And then you also have Assassin's Blade going for like eighty. Uh, shouldn't be uh, uh, associated with the Assassination Blade, which is almost worthless. But the Assassin's Blade. Good price on that one too. And then after the Assassin's Blade, uh, you have... They're not that interesting. You have like the uh, Face Smasher that I just showed you. You have the Night Reaver, which is kind of good. And the rest of them is like Black Malice. And then you also have Mind Trust Bracers. Uh, but they're, they're not worth that much gold. And then of course, you can get like open world uh, blue items. But once again, they're not that good. But there's a ton of decent items in Shadowfang Keep. And uh, the Shadowfang and Assassin's Blade, not that hard to sell. Neither is the Duskbringer. Gloom Shroud and Necrology, tougher to sell, but not impossible. I've sold them myself. Uh, but that was pretty much it for today's video. So I'm going to leave these items, the name of these items down below in the description so you guys can check it out while you're farming. But I would, as always, like advise you guys to run with Loot Appraiser so the add-on will let you know whenever you pick up something of value so you don't accidentally a vendor or something that's good. But that was it for today's video. So make sure you click that thumbs up, the like button if you enjoyed the video because it really helps out me and my channel and I appreciate it. And I will see all of you guys back in on tomorrow's video. But until then, bye-bye.